back when they were trying to feed the 5,000 and the 4,000. It's going to take a lot of money. We know exactly how much money it's going to take. Here they figured out exactly how much money that nard cost. You know, they figured out exactly how much it was. They were very good at that. What we need to be is very good at giving it, not very good at counting it. If there was anything about a waste, it was the widow's two copper coins. That was a waste of giving. Not because she did it, but because of who she gave it to. Jesus says the temple's going to be gone here in a couple of years. Jesus says the temple is done as, as far as a religious institution. And, and, you know, she gave it to people who were going to use it to abuse her. That would have been a waste of giving. But Jesus doesn't even say that. Because what he focuses on is the fact that she trusted God with everything. And she gave everything that she had to the Lord. That's what we need to focus on. That everything we have belongs to God. Why the waste was their question. Real, literally, it says, to what purpose this destruction, pouring out the perfume would have been destruction in their mind. What purpose this destruction? Jesus says that his blood is poured out the same way. As the lady poured out that, uh, that perfume, he pours out his blood. Why waste Jesus on a cross? Why waste Jesus on a cross? You know, we have people out there that we think, why did Jesus have to die for them? They're a waste. You know, why did he pour out his blood for those people? Because the world needs saving. Judas needed saving. The scribes and the Pharisees needed saving. This woman needed saving. The widow needed saving. All of these evil people need saving. And Jesus doesn't care if it's a waste. He cares that it's offered. And we need to know that God has offered us salvation. And it's not a waste. Now, Jesus tells these people that the poor you will always have with you. Now, there's something people that say, well, that means that there's nothing that you can do about the poor. They're always going to be here, so you just might as well ignore them. Uh, in fact, there were Jews at this time who were saying that when Jesus, when the Messiah, not Jesus, when the Messiah comes, that the poor will continue into the Messianic kingdom. It's like, well, you're poor here, you're going to be poor in heaven. You know, well, Jesus said, the poor you will always have with you. That means heaven, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that we don't, that we don't have to do anything about the poor. Poverty is not divinely ordained to continue. In fact, when, when God set up the, the government of Israel, in the book of Deuteronomy, it says, if you follow these rules, you will never have any poor. But since I know that you're not going to follow these rules, you will always have poor. But when we get to heaven and we follow God's rules, poverty will be done away with. No Christian who is blessed with, these, with the world's goods can say to another person, I don't need to help you, or you deserving what you get, or you know, it's your own fault, or it's God's will. We need to know that God's will is for us to help the poor. For us to help the poor. The gospel calls Christians to help those in need. But it also calls Christians to to love God extravagantly with all of our heart and soul and mind. And we need to do that. Both of those go hand in hand. To love God extravagantly and to love people. Jesus says you can help the poor anytime you want. What he means by that is you have to be willing to help the poor. You know, every day is a good day to help somebody out. Every day is a good day to use your money in exactly the way God has asked you to. We have to be willing. It says about this woman, what she had, she did. It doesn't matter how much you have. It matters that you give it all to God. It doesn't matter if you have two cents to rub together like the widow. Or if you have, you know, $25,000 riding around in your pocket like this, this anointing woman did. It doesn't matter. It matters that you give all that you have, whether it's time, whether it's talent, whether it's money, whatever it is, we have to give it all to God. Those who hold back on the poor, those who hold back and, and say, no, I don't want to use this for what God says to use it for, are going to hold back on their love for God. That's the rich young man, the rich young ruler. He comes to Jesus and says, what do I have to do to be saved? Jesus says, love the poor. Well, the man couldn't love the poor and he couldn't love Jesus either. And Jesus says, I'm sorry, but that's just the way it's going to be. Jesus connects this woman's actions to wherever the gospel is preached. We need to know that helping the poor 
helping with medical missions, helping with educational missions, helping with all these kinds of things is part of the gospel that we preach. We need to know that your job, you know, is part of the gospel. We need to know that our, our homes are part of the gospel. Everywhere that we go, everything that we do is part of the gospel, part of our responsibilities in helping the Lord. What is the gospel if not good news for the poor? Now, readers usually want, you and I usually want to know why Judas did what he wanted, what he did. You know, why did he do that? Was he thinking that this would spur Jesus on to, to creating the new kingdom? Was he just mad at Jesus? Uh, you know, what was going on in his mind? But we rarely ask why the woman was so generous. We don't worry about what she did. We worry about what Judas did. I think this is because Judas, we want to do just more than the minimum. Judas did less than the minimum, okay? Judas is the minimum. You know, betray Jesus. And all we want to get away with is, I don't want to be that person who betrays Jesus. So I just want to do a step above. I want to avoid what Judas did. But we really need to focus on, what did the woman do? Because she did everything. Judas did the minimum. She did the maximum. And we need to know that we should go after the maximum. Making sure that everything that we do Every dime that we spent is done serving the Lord. And because we love him and want to serve him, what do you want? Do you want to do the minimum and just avoid what Judas did? Or do you want to serve the Lord with every part of your heart and every part of your life like this woman? Let's pray. Father, we know that there are tons of people in this world that need you. And Lord, we pray that we would help them with our money, with our voices, with our talents. Lord, we pray that you would help us to serve you extravagantly. We know that that doesn't mean giving everything that we have to the poor, but we know that it means that we give everything that we have to you and every last dime that we spend, every last thing that we buy, every last moment of our lives. Lord, we pray that we would spend it in love for you pouring it out extravagantly and lovingly. Lord, we pray that our lives would be lived that way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.